Thank you for joining us at watchthechurch.com. My name is Emily, and before we begin today's message, we want to tell you guys about our live gatherings. We meet every Sunday at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. at 120 South Locust Street in downtown Visalia. If you're in the area, we would love to see you here at the church. Now here's Pastor Kevin with today's message. I gave this illustration one time here at the church, and I, I believe, uh, do we have some guys here from the mission? Yeah. Some of the mission crew? I know, Daniel, you, you've heard this illustration before, because uh, the guys used to always come up to me and say part of this in a minute. And so some of you may have heard this illustration before, but it is, it is so imperative for us to remember this and that we apply this, what we're getting ready to show you today, okay? So... Um, Veronica and I, years ago, we had a dog uh, named Budkiss, not Buttkiss, it's Budkiss. Remember the old uh, Chicago Bears, um, Chicago Bears linebacker, back when football was football and they could kill the quarterback. Now, don't even get me started about how they treat Tom Brady. Don't even get me started. But anyways, um, <laughs> this was back in the, the football days and there was a, the, you know, one of the guys that I liked from, you know, just kind of studying football was, was, was Dick Budkiss. And so we named our, our dog this, and he was a St. Bernard, so he was big and hairy, a lot like the football player. So uh, that's why we named him this. And so Butkus was a great dog, and we had him for several years by this point. And we lived out in the country where there was, we had a sprawling three-acre piece of property, and Butkus, that's all St. Bernards do, he, they like to roam. And so Budkiss used to really move all over those acreages, which, that, which we liked because it spread his blessings all, all over and not in one spot. And so, but what began to happen was, is Budkiss began to get into the neighbors and in the cornfield and different things. And so, to make a long story short, because of the way that Budkiss was, was living, uh, we, we had to go to chaining Budkiss to his house. Now, he had a really big house, and he also had a very, very long chain it was way this is about 20 feet but it was it was longer than this and it was actually a lot thicker than this because Butkus would he'd break this pretty easy but we had this really long chain and so what happened is is Butkus would no, I'll just go ahead and do it I'll be I'll be the dog today Butkus would he would get in his chain and he would walk all around sometimes close to the house sometimes far away from the house and he would walk in a circle And as he walked in a circle, he would begin to kind of, you know, tear down the grass and the grass started to get dirt and then it would rain and it got muddy and then Butkus got mud up on his on his paws and he'd lay down in it because maybe it's, you know, he's wanting to cool down and he's got dirt all over him and Butkus sometimes would just be a mess out there and he would be walking around this really long chain but still chained walking around and he's walking around and all of he got to where this area was wherever his chain was there was no grass it was completely dry dirt or it was completely wet and swampy and there was one time where Budkus had been chained for a little while and he wanted to get free and I'll never forget he would come to the edge He would walk all the way to the edge and he would look right at the door of our house and he would just begin to bark. And then he'd go back and he'd walk back towards the house, his his house. Then he'd come back out and go all the way to the edge and look right at our house again. And then he'd go back and he'd walk and meander in the mud. And then he'd come back again. (laughs) And it was almost as if as he kept doing it, it was like his voice changed and he was speaking to me because it was driving me crazy. Oh, 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 let me out, let me out, let me out. And he just kept going, let me out. And finally, I'm like, good God, man, you're driving okay. I know the neighbors are going to kill me, but you've been chained for a while. And so I went out, and I let Butkus' chain go. And I dropped it on the ground. And Butkus was completely free. And as I go to walk away, I see that Butkus just goes right back to his house, meanders in the mud, head down. I go in, I sit down, and I look outside, and I see Butkus 
He goes right to the edge of the dirt and the green grass. Let me out! 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 And he just kept wherever, right at the edge. Out! And I realized after about five more minutes of him walking around where he had always been, chain on the ground and coming to the edge and screaming, Out! I realized Butkus is free, but he doesn't realize he's free. The chain has been taken off of Butkus, but he doesn't know it. And so I went out and I went down to Butkus and I grabbed a hold of him and I said, Hey, buddy. And I and purposely took the chain by his ear and I looked him in the eye and I said, Hey, Butkus, you ready to go free? And I went and I dropped him. And whenever I did, boom, he ran over me and went to the neighbor's house and pooped on the porch. So it was a fun day. So, but. Butkus was completely free. His master had set him free from the chain that had allowed him to only go so far. From the chain that had made him sit in, 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 in dirt and, and, and meander back and forth and, and mope at times and come to the very edge and see the neighbor's yard, see the acreage and see where he wanted to go, but not be able to go because the chain was holding him back. Butkus was free from that. There was no chain, but yet Butkus would only go to the edge of where the chain had previously led him. Butkus would complete always go back to where he had always walked, even though he was completely free. And today, what I want to talk to you about has a lot to do with this story. All of us in the room today or watching online we in our lives, we were chained to ourselves. And there's a house physically that we've always lived in. There's a house emotionally that we've always lived in. There's a way of life that we always had. And the chain held us to that. And for one year and two years and the crazy mixed up teen years and for some into their 20s or maybe into their 30s, we walked around where only the chain would let us walk. Now we saw greener pastures. We saw joy and we saw love and we saw intimacy and we saw a blessing and we saw meaning in life and we saw where other people have been walking and we see and we want that. And every time in our life we would try and break free from where we have been and go on our own to what we know that we really want, we can only go as far as the chain would allow us to go. So we went back and this is where we lived. And the grass began to go away in our heart. And the dirt began to show up. And then it would rain and our life would get muddy. It would get messy. Then it wouldn't rain spiritually or emotionally for, for weeks and our heart would get very dry and we're walking on a dry dirt. And it was miserable. And like Budkus, we came to a time in our life, many, maybe not all, but many of you came to a time in your life where you had gone as far as you could possibly go. You had taken as much as you could possibly take. And so you cried out to the Heavenly Father, and you cried out to the heavens, and you cried out to the door, Jesus, and you said, let me out! Let me out! Let me out of this emotional state. Let me out of this sin that I keep going back to. Let me out of this anxiety. Let me out of this pattern. And then we would walk back into it. And then we'd remember where we want to go, and we'd run, let me out! And for many in the room today, Jesus opened up and he came and he knelt down beside us and he removed the chain. And we stood up and for many today, we still go back and we're walking around where we've always been. But for those of us in the room today, 
that Jesus Christ has came to us and he has set us free from our sins. Today, what I believe that God wants me to tell you is he wants me to remind you of what he has done for you. And as I went to Butkus and I grabbed a hold of the chain and I said, Butkus, you're free. I believe today that Jesus wants you to hear. There is no chain. There is no chain. Jesus Christ has set you free from you. He set you free from you. There is no chain. This is what Scripture says. Scripture says in John chapter 8, verse 36, it says, So if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. On that day, Butkus was completely 100% free. He was free to run. He was free to stay. He was free to go. He was free. And if Jesus, the big word is if, if the Son. So if the Son... If Jesus has come into your heart and grabbed a hold of your past and unlatched you from it, he's unlatched you from yourself. You are free from your greatest enemy. You're free from you. You're, I'm free from me. Jesus said, excuse me, the, the, um, the Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I love this passage. It's one of my few life passages. It says, for I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, now listen carefully. For I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I still live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And this life that I live in this body or in this flesh I now live through faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What happens when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior is he comes to us and he sets us free from us. And we, our flesh, our, our spiritual man on the inside of this fleshly body, dies. And like a dead man or a dead woman hitting the ground, the chains of self are gone. I have been crucified with Christ. I don't know if you've studied much of crucifixion. People don't get off the cross. They die. I have been killed with Christ. However, I'm alive. But it's not me that's living it's Jesus Christ in me. And this life that I now live in this body, I don't live through the body anymore. Because I'm not inside anymore. I don't live through the body. I live through what? Faith in Jesus. That he set me free. Jesus Christ has set you free from you. He set me free from me. And it is so important for us to remember this because I think, I know for me this, it's this way, I think it's this way for all humans. In one way or another, when, you, when you, we come back to our life, that many times what happens is, is we forget the fact that we've been set free and we, instead of running to the joy that we could have or running to the new life that we could have or running to the peace that we could have or the new start or the calling or whatever it is that we could have, we stay where we are. And we only go as far spiritually as what we've been in the past. We always go as, as far relationally as what we've been in the past. We only let our, we let our past and the mud of our past be the, def, um, be the defining line of how far I'm going to go in my life, even though there's no more chain. And this isn't how we should live. So today I want to remind us that as Christians, as Christ followers, you are free now, here's the draw bottom line. I'm not, meaning to, I'm not meaning to be harsh with this, but if you're in the room today or you're watching online and you haven't accepted Christ into your heart, 
you're not free. You can only go as far as you and your flesh will allow you to go. But if you have Jesus, you're free. So because of this, I want to I break some of this down today. Here's some things that you need to know and do as a Christian because you're free. Here's the first one is you need to know this is you need to know that you feel how you feel, but you are not how you feel. Okay, I'm going to say this again because it sounds confusing. One of the things that we as Christ followers have got to understand and clearly know is that we feel how we feel. Your emotions are your emotions. If you feel angry, you feel angry. If you feel sad, you feel sad. If you feel anxious, you feel anxious. You feel how you feel. However, now because of Jesus Christ, you feel how you feel, but you, you are not defined by how you feel. You feel how you feel, but you are not defined. You are not held back. You are not a captive to how you feel. And people without Christ, and far too many people even with Christ, don't understand this. That with Jesus, I feel how I feel, but I am not how I feel. That's my flesh. This is who I am. And we see this kind of played out a little bit in the, in the book of Joshua. I love this passage. My wife, Veronica, has quoted this passage to our kids so many times when they were young. Joshua 1.9. Now, what, what's going on here is, is Joshua has now taken over for Moses, who was his mentor, his lifelong mentor, the greatest leader, maybe actually in history. And this guy is now taking over for his mentor and a great leader. And he's getting ready to go into Jericho. He's getting ready to go into the promised land. And he is feeling scared. He, 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 he's feeling afraid. So God comes to Joshua, and this is what he says. Joshua, in Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I, this is God, have I not commanded you, Joshua, be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged because I'm going to be with you wherever you go. Now that sounds really great and looks great on a, on, a, on a coffee cup. But let's just get into Joshua's skin here. I got to be honest with you, I, I kind of side with Joshua on this one. He, he has every right to feel afraid. He's never led this group. In fact, the one who did lead the group, the, this group so jacked up, the former guy who did lead the group, who was great, he asked God to kill him so he wouldn't have to lead the group anymore. I'd be a little bit afraid too. If Moses can't do it, how can I do it? And Joshua begins to feel discouraged. He begins to feel afraid. And many times in our life, that's how we are. This begins to happen in our life and we feel anxious. And we feel depressed or we feel distraught or we feel timid. Or we feel like paying someone back. We feel this. But listen carefully to what God told Joshua. Joshua never said, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't feel afraid. Don't feel discouraged. Because I'll be with you wherever. He didn't say, Don't feel afraid. He said, don't be afraid. He didn't say, don't feel discouraged. He said, don't be discouraged. And maybe, just maybe, in this story, one of the things that God is trying to show us as Christ followers is, is that Joshua, listen, Joshua, I know you're going to feel afraid, but because of who I am, I am with you wherever you go. You are not you. You are actually me. So don't be afraid. Be strong. Don't be timid. Be courageous. Yes, your flesh feels this way, but you are not your flesh because I am with you. And if he was saying that to Joshua, when God was on the outside of Joshua and Joshua was here, how much more so is it now that when God is not afar off, but God is inside of us? God is telling us, listen, you're going to feel afraid. 
You're going to feel discouraged. You're going to feel anxious, but you don't have to be those things. In fact, you're not because you're dead. And now what you are is Christ in you. So who is Christ? What, 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 what are some of the characteristics? What are some of the qualities of, of Jesus? Pure, holy, powerful, loving, kind, persistent, long-suffering, patient. You say, well, that, that's not me, that's Jesus. No, no. I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. I don't live anymore. Now Jesus lives in me. Jesus' purity is in me. Jesus' power is in me. Jesus' holiness is in me. Jesus' long-suffering is in me. And who I am is now dead. I am now the things that Jesus is. This is who I am on the inside. And this life that I live in this flesh that will be scared, that will feel anxious, that will feel timid, that will feel, pain, will feel all of these things... I don't live in those things anymore. I live through Christ. I live through His purity, His strength, His courage. And you've got to understand that because Jesus has come to you, there is no chain of fear anymore. There is no chain of feelings anymore. Yes, you're going to feel it. But it doesn't have to stop you. That's the amazingness of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And there are far too many Christians, they see what they should do. They know what they're called to. They know the next step, but they won't take it because they feel something. There's no chain anymore. You can take the step. You feel how you feel, but you are not how you feel. Because of that, because of that, don't pursue being happy. Don't pursue happiness. Just do what's right. You, you don't have to pursue happiness anymore. Because happiness and sadness is just a feeling. Just do the right thing now. You used to not be able to do that because you were held by your feelings. Now you're not anymore. So don't, don't be like the old you and pursue happiness and go back to this stuff. Feelings are a lot like a balloon. A balloon is held, is held by a rule of law of what goes up must come down. It's something called gravity. You and I are held by that same thing. Our flesh lives by the laws of this world. Our spirit man does not, but our flesh lives by the laws of this world. And the laws of this world are what goes up must come down and what happens is is we get duped into thinking that we can always feel good that i can feel good i should feel good in my job i should feel good in my faith i should feel good uh, with my friends i should feel good with my children i should i should do everything to feel good and we want to keep the balloon up here and that's pretty simple when you only have one thing of life but when all of a sudden now you get two things what begins to happen is, is now, man, I got, man, okay, I've, I've got to be happy in my job, but I also got to be happy in my marriage. I got to be happy in my job. I got to be happy in my marriage, happy in my job, happy in my marriage. And then all of a sudden, I'm not happy anymore. And this is getting too frustrated. I'm going to go pursue what makes me happy. And we go from one job to another job, from one friend to another friend, from one relationship to another relationship, from one self-medication to another self-medication, because by God, I've got to keep the balloon up. Here's the secret. The balloon is not going to stay up. Feelings go up and feelings go down. But I don't live by my feelings. Scripture says in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no divine guidance, people run wild. Where there is no vision, people perish. That's another version. It says here that where, there is no, where there's no guidance, when there's no divine guidance, when what guides us is our flesh, not our spirit, man, what happens is, is we run wild. We run here and we run there. We run here and we run there because we've got to be happy. And then we're running so hard to try and be happy. Oh, God. Whew. Whew. I don't feel happy anymore. 
and we run ourselves ragged, we make ourselves unhappy trying so hard to be happy. When through Christ, we don't have to be happy. It's okay. Because I'm not motivated by happiness or anxiety, by, fe by fear. That's not my motivation. My motivation is Jesus. And what's the right thing? You see, one of the things I've found so many times in life and working with people, and even with my own life, is at some point, at some point, we get to a point in our life where we look around and say, oh, how in the world, how did I get here? At, at, at some point, we all get to a point where we say, how, how did I get here? How, how, did I, how did I end up here? And see, see, what happens is, is in Deuteronomy, God gives this, this word. He says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, all that you would choose life that you would live. Basically, what he's saying there is I set before you good and I set before you bad. I wish that you would choose good. I set before you your flesh and what feels good, and I set before you what is right. Oh, I hope you choose what's right. That's what he's saying. Life and death, good and bad, feelings, principle. And what happens in our life is, is we are driven in our life either by what feels good or we are driven in our life by what is right. And when we live our life saying, man, I am so angry right now. I feel like doing this, but I know God's word says to do this. And we say, forget God's word. This is how I feel. And we do what feels right in our anger. Man, th this is <laughs> money. This is what I'm feeling right now in my finances. And I'm so stressed out right now i don't know what to do so i feel like just giving up and charging a whole bunch of junk so i can feel good right or and i'm going to be a good steward i i, I know what god's okay and we go by how we feel and then we go by how we feel in our marriage and by how we feel in our find by how we feel in our education and we come to a point in our life where we look around and we say how in the world did i get here how did, I, how did I get here, man? I've been married four times now. I've got seven kids. Only three of them will even talk to me. I got all this money in the bank and I can't even sleep at night. Or I don't have any money in the bank and I can't sleep at night. How did I get here? How did I get into this place where I look in the mirror and I don't even like myself? I chose what felt good. 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 And it led us right back to where we've always been, to the doghouse of our life. Or, whew, I am so angry right now. And this is what I feel like doing, but this is what God, I'm going to do what God says. Man, I'm, I'm so tight right now, financially. I feel like doing this, but I know what the Word says. I'm going to do what the Word says. I'm going to do what the Word says in my marriage, what the Word says in my job, what the Word says, where, what the Word says. I'm going to do what the Word says. I'm going to do what the Word says. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to do what's right. And we come to a point in our life where we look around and say, how in the, how in the world did I get here? I never thought I would come this far. I never thought I could feel this free. I never thought marriage could be like this. I never thought a relationship with my kids could be like this. I never knew that I could be free from my addictions. How in the world did I get this far? We got this far. Because we knew that we were free. And I'm not chained by how I feel. And yes, I feel angry, but I'm going to do what's right. And yes, I feel depressed, but I'm going do what's right and yes i feel this but i'm going to do what's right and before we know it we've broken past the mud we've broken past the mire we've broken past every barrier we've ever went and we're doing things we never dreamed we would do we've always thought about it but we couldn't because we were chained you are free from you 
And your feelings no longer have to hold you. So because of that, realize you feel how you feel, but you are not what you feel. And now pursue what's right, regardless of the emotion. Because I don't live through my emotions. I live in faith. I live in faith. And then the last one is this. is just simply, just keep doing the right thing. J- just keep doing the right thing. You know, inside of each and every one of us, there's, there are bad desires and there are good desires. Inside of every one of us. And Scripture says that when we are tempted, we're tempted when we are drawn away by our own lust. And we always read that. And in that context, it is saying that in, in the negative sense. However, you don't have just bad lust. You don't have just bad desires. You have good desires. There's part of you that wants to sleep in. There's the other part that wants to get up and read the Word. There's part of you that wants to, to, uh, to, to, to kind of do it your own way. There's another one that says, I should be praying about 30 minutes a day. There's part of you that says, I'll go to church when I want. There's another part that says, I'm going to go to church every week. There's a part of you that says, I'm going to pay her back. There's another part that says, I'm going to walk in forgiveness. Which one are you going to do? You're going to do whichever one you feed. And here's what I found in my life. That our feelings are fed by our actions. Your feelings are fed by your actions. Have you noticed that before? When you first start working out, you don't feel like working out, and then about two months in, you you feel bad if you don't work out. Why? Your feelings followed your actions. But then if you say, you know, I don't really feel like working out, so I'm not. I don't really feel like working out, so I'm not. I don't really feel like working out. And two months from now, you're not going to feel like working out. Why? Because your feelings followed your actions. If you work out, you'll feel like working out. And that's what Scripture is saying, is there's good temptations and there's bad temptations. Feed the good ones. Just start doing the right thing, and eventually you'll go past how you feel, and you won't even feel that way anymore. So in recap today, it's this. You are free from you. You feel how you feel, but you are not how you feel. Don't make decisions. Excuse me. Don't pursue happiness. Do what's right. And then just simply keep doing what's right. Feed the good desires. Listen, I don't really know who this is for. I think it's probably for all of us. But I'm sure that there are some in the room today where you have been feeling a certain, and God's telling you, you're free today. Don't any longer go by your emotions. Jesus has knelt beside you. He has rattled the chain. And your feelings no longer have to hold you. In fact, they're not. The only reason we go back to the doghouse as Christians is because we felt like it. But there's no chain anymore. Let's walk as Christ has called us to walk. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord, that you have, as Christ followers, you have set us free. And Lord, we ask today that you would take this message, this illustration, and you would burn it deep inside of our heart. For some, it's going to hit different areas, but let us really clearly understand we feel how we feel, but we are not how we feel. That Jesus Christ has broken the chains of emotions, and we now are able to simply do the right thing regardless of how it feels. And God, help us to walk in that. Help us to live in faith, not to live in in our flesh. In Jesus' name, amen.